Thanks again to Channel 18's Community Journal. Our first guest today is Barbara Ann Foley, the Director of the Council on Aging. And as you can see, you know, you get a picture of the desk. Barbara Ann has everything lined up. <laughs> and what are we going to start with, Barbara Ann? Well, the Council on Aging was uh, lucky enough to receive a few grants for this summer, and two of them are back-to-back -back coming right around the corner. One is going to be on July 13th, and the other is going to be on July 14th. So the first one, through the culture, these are cultural council grants, so we want to thank Massachusetts and Harwich Cultural Councils um, for allowing us to have these two grants. The first one is a man named Steve Collins, who does a one-man show on uh, 30, 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. And he has um, been given a number of accolades that we've um, heard from other councils on aging that they have like a little blurb in their newsletters saying he was really well received, everybody loved him. Um, he takes you through those, those pieces of time and how the Great Depression influenced people and he does different people's works, including Tennessee Williams, uh, Arthur Miller, and Eugene O'Neill. And then the second grant, um, and he's actually quite funny. I watched a YouTube video oh. of him. Um, so if you, if you Google Stephen Collins, um, you can do that yourself. He's, um, he's very good, and he's at times very funny, as I said, and it's Stephen with a V and Collins has two L's, but he, um, he does one very dysfunctional family, and it's very, <laughs> very funny. Now, do you need, how many people do you need for this particular show? This program, we, can, we are hoping to have as many as possible. It's uh, going to be in the multi-purpose room, and he will be on stage, and we're hoping that we'll fill the multi-purpose room. It is a free program. So uh, you can come and bring all your summer guests. <laughs> I joke with people, that's not an excuse. A lot of people will say to me, yeah, but I've got company. Well, this is something you definitely would want to bring the company to. It's, it's um, very good. And it's going to be um, with a combination with our supper club. So it'll be on Monday, July 13th at 5 o'clock. So a nice early supper. And then you get to hear Steve. And then you still have time to go to the beach or do something else with your company, take a <laughs> walk on the beach at night, or go for ice cream or something. Um, <laughs> So you do need to sign up. So the only cost is the supper club, which is $5. Mm -hmm. The other one is a very fun program at the Mass Council on Aging. Um, we met this woman, a registered dietitian and um, just a wonderful background person. Her name is Trisha Silverman. And she does a whole wellness program based on the Mediterranean diet. So I asked, she writes a grant because she likes to be able to take these different cultural diets um, to Councils on Aging to let people know how you might be able to benefit. So one of the fun parts that she's going to do, besides interactive discussions and food props and that kind of thing, um, is she's going to do a olive oil taste testing. What does that mean? So she will have a... Um, regular uh, olive oil that will be on a plate with some bread or something to do taste testing with. And then she'll have an extra virgin olive oil and the same kind of bread. And blindfolded or um, not knowing, you will taste both. And we want to know if you can taste the difference between the extra virgin <laughs> and not. And she says that most of the time people can tell the difference. And it is a, um, it's a big difference health-wise, and I will let her tell you that. But she did a, a test for us and had us pick, um, when we were up north, our favorite drink, our favorite sugar drink. And, of course, there was Coca-Cola and orange Fanta soda and iced tea and the coffee colada kind of drinks. And she showed us how you convert the um, sugars that are in there, and you see them on the label two teaspoons and to figure out how many teaspoons of sugar were in those drinks. Well, then she had us tape the little packages of sugar that you would get at a, a local coffee shop. We taped them together and we had to stand in a row of who had, you know, six teaspoons, 10 teaspoons, 15 teaspoons. 
And when you see that visual of how many teaspoons of sugar are in your favorite beverage, you never want to drink it again. <laughs> um, it we sounds even, very interesting. It was, it was yeah. really interesting. And it's, um, it's, we do it with our kids in the Girl Power program, but she did it with us, and it was a, it's very impactful. And she talks about how they, um, police officers and firefighters, when they're having to get blood off of a road, will use Coca-Cola. They have it in the back of their trunk sometimes. So it shows you how powerful, powerful and, Coke is, yes. yeah, and horrible <clears throat> that it is. You get rid of stomach. a lot of things. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so another announcement is we have a trivia program that's starting to grow, which is great. We've changed the date, and I wanted to make sure everybody knows. All of this, by the way, is in your newsletter that is going to print hopefully next week. And uh, we have changed it to Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. We are getting a little bit more, a little more in, uh, participation and interaction, and we're hoping to have a little more uh, competition coming up in the not so distant future. I wanted to remind people that in um, July and August at um, seven o'clock, no, five o'clock, seven o'clock. I was right the first time. Um, we have the free concerts, town band concerts on the green. Um, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. I was joking with somebody recently that I can remember, I'm dating myself, but I can remember when I would take my boys, and they were boys at the time, and they we always came with little American flags, and they do a little patriotic theme, either in the very beginning or the very end, and they have a parade of children that go around yes. the bandstand, mm -hmm. and they do just fun songs and the kids all march and they think it's all great fun. Well, those boys are now 21 and 25. So <laughs> it shows you what a wonderful legacy this town has and just how much fun the kids have at that. So if you do, again, if you have guests, bring them. Um, all ages are welcome. It's all um, music that everybody loves and it's a great time. And I would definitely say to bring your bug spray. That's the only thing we used to forget <laughs> sometimes. Yes. Um, Another couple of important announcements. Sadly, we did not have enough um, veterans attending our veterans coffee. I'm not quite sure what the reason was, whether it was a day of the week or the time, or they just frequent coffee shops and didn't want to come here. We're not offended, it's totally okay. I did want to let people know though that it will be discontinued um, starting in July. It's not something that we could never bring back. We are open and uh, welcome to do that at any point, but we would need to get more than one to three people, and that's pretty much what we've been averaging. So if it is something of interest, please don't hesitate to let me know. Another interesting announcement um, is it is the golden anniversary um, this year of Medicare. It's 50 years, if you can believe that. Medicare is 50 years old? It wow. is 50 years old. And in fact, about 55 million Americans have Medicare this year, and more than 70 million have Medicaid in any given month. I just thought that was an interesting statistic, and we do have the anniversary um, that they gave us in our newsletter. It is interesting. 50 know. years, it's yeah. not something I thought was yeah. that old. You think that almost everybody has Medicare. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have another program. Our uh, friends from the Consumer Affairs Office, or Office of Consumer Affairs, uh, Julian Smith is going mm. to come on Wednesday, July 22nd, from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. So of course, my friend's first comments are going to be, well, so what about lunch? <laughs> well, they will talk through the lunch. So if you would like to participate in this program, um, the presentation will include important information about the office shopping rights, the types of scams that target consumers, especially seniors, and how to spot and avoid scams and prevent identity theft. So she will be coming again on Wednesday, July 22nd from 11 to 12, and it will be incorporating the lunch program. You do need to RSVP for that program. And again, it'll be in your newsletter. Um, the other two quick announcements, we have a brand new column in our newsletter, and we're calling it a Harwich Historical Perspective. We certainly are open to a different, better name than that, but that's what we're starting with. And what we thought would be fun, we've been having some lunchtime discussions and others with some of our historian friends um, in my own department, 
my two guys, Rick Anderson and Kevin Grunwald, as well as our new van driver and Harwich historian, Dana DaCosta. And we were chatting about different figures in Harwich. And one of the ideas we had was, we knew about a lot of these people, but we said there's probably a lot of folks in Harwich, both new and old, that may not know about these historic, hor historical figures. So kind of going along with what John Roach used to do with us <laughs> and looking up our Harwich history people and how important it is, we thought we'd start with our old friend, Caleb Chase. And the reason for that is because we do have a Caleb Chase fund that he started, or I guess his legacy left to us. So be sure to read your newsletter and um, read about Caleb Chase. It's, um, we'll be looking for input from you if you have anyone in particular you would like us to highlight. Again, the newsletter is every two months, so there's only six per year we can do. <laughs> We've already got three or four ideas, so don't hesitate to give me a call. The last two things I want to talk to you about are very, very important. One of them is we have a very big change. It's big and it's not at the same time. And what I mean by that is we are going to continue to have a support group for caregivers with Alzheimer's people, Alzheimer's patients or families. Um, however, the support group facilitator will remain the same, but the company that she comes from is going to change. So we will continue with our wonderful friend and nurse, um, Frances Lavin, and she will be assisted by Gail Bunnell, and they will do the groups the same that we've been doing before, the first and third Wednesdays, and we'll be starting this on July 1st, um, so it's right around the corner. And you'll see in your newsletter, it does say new Alzheimer's support group for patients and families. If you've been attending, it's not new to you, but, um, and the facilitator is not new to you, but the company that they're coming from is now going to be the Alzheimer's Family Support Center in Brewster. So I want to make sure people were clear we were not um, disbanding our, our support group. We're starting with a new vendor, and we're very excited because we're able to keep that continuum of care with Fran Lavin. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to give me a ring. Um, and I can explain anything further to you or answer any questions that you might have. And last but not least, we have our talked with um, Paul and I have talked before about the Aging Mastery Program. Mm. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, temporary set up some dates. We are looking for, it's a two hour commitment and it is 12 weeks. We are looking to start on August 4th and end on October 27th, right here at the council. And the topics that will happen when people say to me, aging mastery, what the heck does that mean? Well, anybody that is over the age of 55 is welcome. It is targeted at the boomer age bracket. And what we're hoping for is we're going to discover uh, together how four precepts in working with people in these groups will improve their lives and help them to empower taking over their health. And that sounds kind of like a really big uh, giant task, but we talk about simple things like healthy eating and hydration and physical activity and medication management and healthy relationships and falls prevention. So with each of those topics is a different speaker. So you don't have to listen to my voice for 12 weeks. It's different people that we will have that will be coming in and they will talk about each of those topics. And then after each of the conversations of question and answer afterwards, there is a activity and homework, for lack of a better way to put it. And if you complete the activity and the homework, you get bonus points. And those bonus points turn into prizes. So it has kind of a little bit of a reward system, if you will, that goes with it. And they're fun little prizes. And we will be uh, starting up our balance class upon the conclusion of this. So if it's something that you say, wow, I really liked doing the exercise piece in this course, you'll be able to join the balance class or any of our other huge amount of exercise programs. So the whole goal is to get people involved back in their health, off of their couches or out of their chairs, and to kind of take charge of their life. And when you say, well, boomers are kind of already young enough to be doing that, aren't they? Well, some of them are working and they don't find a whole lot of time to be able to do that. This is a one time a week commitment 
for two hours, so hopefully they will be able to do this. And if we are successful, we will continue to offer it on a regular basis. So um, we're hoping that if you are able to participate in this program, that um, we were only one of 35 that were chosen in our whole state. And there's 349 senior centers in our whole state, so that's pretty good. And we are hoping again to start in August on the 4th. The biggest caveat is we need 30 participants, and we have about 15 right now. So if you're watching this, um, we are going on Friday of this week. We're going to be having an informational session. If you're not able to make that, please don't hesitate to call me or make an appointment to stop in. I can show you the little um, book. There's a spiral-bound book that goes with it. And I'll end by telling you that the beginning, the very first session I thought was just marvelous and, and a perfect way to begin. The very first session is all about gratitude. And you might say, what the heck does that have to do with your health? Um, it, believe it or not, it has a lot to do with your health. And we have two ways that you can do a gratitude or um, grateful journal. One is online, if you happen to use a computer, iPad, or iPhone. And the other is an actual um, physical journal. And you talk about writing something positive down each day that you're grateful for. And they have another question of, have you done anything this week for someone else or for yourself? And that's a question a lot of people don't, don't answer because they don't do a lot of things for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're uncomfortable <coughs> doing something for mm -hmm. themselves. My husband would tell you that he, it's very easy for him to do something for someone else because he's accustomed to doing that. But if you ask him to take time and do something for himself, <laughs> many people, including my husband um, and myself at times, are not comfortable taking that time for themselves. So it incorporates, like I said, everything from a gratitude journal um, all the way through to healthy eating and keeping yourself hydrated and financial fitness, et cetera. So in your newsletter, you will have the dates. Tomorrow, uh, Friday, is our informational session with a light salad um, luncheon. And I'm sorry, Friday, not tomorrow. And if you have any questions, you can give me a call at the Harwich Council on Aging at 430-7550. I would like to bring up again scams. Absolutely. You know, uh, I think that's very important. I was scammed, I tried to be, uh, this past spring. My wow. uh, fellow called, told me he was my grandson. Oh. And he sounded exactly like him, and he was in the police station. And so he had to get money. Need to be bailed out, be right? bailed out. That was the, you get the whole thing. Uh, so we just followed that through, and uh, we called him at work, and he was at work. <laughs> he wasn't at the police station. So uh, my son, or my son's ex-wife, got a hold of him and called up his, my son and said, he's, he's okay. Then I get a call from him. So it's, it's, it's there, it's out there for everybody. How did you get the person off the phone? How did I get him off the phone? The bad guy. Uh, well, I had to send a check somewhere. So it wasn't, they weren't asking for a credit card? No. To, okay. Well, maybe they decided that uh, it wasn't a good thing. You weren't you know, the easiest mark. I wasn't going to be easy. So they didn't get into that. But it was a scam. Absolutely. And, and so I, I called the police and let them know. But I didn't hear any more from it. So uh, it's interesting. Well, I'll tell you, that same scam got another person in town who has a person, a, a grandson who's in the Navy, whose father is also in the Navy. So they said <clears throat> the person had gotten enough information and said, um, I need to be bailed out because dad's on ship and I can't get a hold of him, which was true. He was on ship and he couldn't, wouldn't have been able to get a hold of him. And I need to be bailed out. He had so much detail. It was, it, it was scary enough that this person was almost ready to send a, um, a Czech Western Union mm -hmm. um, out to these people. And they finally realized after talking with the police, he said, well, they, they knew he was on a ship and they knew, and it was three or four other details. Well, the police finally figured out it was from Facebook. 
That's how the scam, the bad people oh, okay. knew about this person's life. So another piece of this information is be careful what you put on Facebook. I, when people say um, pictures of kids are not you know, a good thing to do or various um, pieces of information, what I would say is when you do put um, photos up, especially if you're in the armed services or police or fire, that kind of thing, they have something on Facebook called tagging, which means you identify the person that's in the picture. And I would suggest if you're going to, if you're in any of the armed services or anything like that, that you not do tagging. And the reason for that is for this exact scam that happened. They not only saw the person in uniform, but when you hover the mouse over that person's face, it says, you know, John Smith. So they knew John Smith, and they knew a grandson, John Smith, and they <laughs> put all the pieces together just by looking at pictures on the person's Facebook page. So, well, that must be the way they uh, somehow or other. It's very scary get how they of, uh, how they get information. Alexander. So, so well, that I day, you definitely want to bring your <laughs> friends. Wednesday, July twenty second, at mm -hmm. the eleven o'clock time frame, and definitely RSVP for that because we need to know how many are coming, so that Julian can bring. Um, 